Welcome to our next video on continuous random variables and their probability distributions. Let's continue on from our normal and standard normal distributions to talk about another type called our log normal distribution. The exponential function, e to the x, is something we use all the time in math. So for example, it's the basis for solutions to differential equations. If you guys haven't had the wonderful opportunity of taking this class yet, I'm sure you will soon. Let's see how this works with distributions. If we define a random variable x as an exponential function whose exponent is a normal random variable, then I get the random variable x equals e to the y, where the natural log of x equals y. So this is kind of showing you where this comes from. In other words, the natural log of the random variable has a normal distribution, hence the name log normal. So once again, the natural log of my random variable has a normal distribution. Okay, so the log normal distribution is a function of the expected value or the mean. For a log normal distribution, we are going to call our expected value this value theta right here. So yet another Greek letter to learn. And the variance is going to be this right here, which is omega squared. So lowercase omega squared. Okay, so note that the expected value and the variance used below are those belonging to natural log of x, which has a normal distribution. They are not the expected value and variance of the actual log normal distribution. Okay, so that's an important distinction to make. Okay, so the formal definition of a log normal distribution is a function, f of x, which is defined as follows. So we have this, which is my probability distribution function, or in this case, my log normal distribution. So I have f of x equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi times omega x, or my standard deviation times x, times e all raised to this, the negative quantity natural log of x minus theta quantity squared divided by 2 times omega squared. So something important to remember is that this function is only defined for positive values of x, and aren't we grateful that there are tabulated values for us that we don't have to integrate this big nasty formula. So once again, we'll be able to use tables, so don't worry. This is an example of a log normal distribution. As you can see, it's not symmetric about my mean, and this is what changing the sigma value does. So this right here is a sigma value of 1, sigma value of 1.5, and sigma value of 0.5. So a real world example of a log normal distribution would be yearly population growth. The growth rate is a random variable because the growth rate varies in response to annual fluctuation of economic, health, and social conditions. Let's see how my expected value and variance differ with my log normal distribution. So the expected value is calculated using the expected value and variance of the natural log of x and it is defined as follows. So here is my expected value formula. So in the past, pretty much the expected value has only changed because I now integrate x times my function. Here, however, I have its own formula for it. The variance is also defined as follows. We can also create a log normal distribution in Excel by using the following function. I have log norm dot dist so this is going to give me a log normal distribution with the mean and variance specified by the user. And I have true for a PDF and false for a CDF. So if a random variable x has a log normal distribution, we can also convert it or transform it to a z-score using the following formula. So this time it's slightly different. I have z equals the natural log of x minus theta over omega, where theta is my expected value, and omega squared is my variance. So we would then use this new formula for a log normal distribution in order to obtain a z-score, but then I could still go to the same z-score tables I have in the past. We can use the standard normal tables to compute the probability for the log normal distributions. So this formula is how I would calculate or approximate the tabulated values of my probability. So here we have the probability that z is less than natural log of x minus theta over omega equals phi of the same thing. 
Let's look at an example. Suppose that x has a log normal distribution with parameters theta equals 2 and omega squared equal to 4. Determine the following. The probability that x is less than 500. So the first thing I do is I need to convert or I need to transform this value into a z-score. So I use my standardizing formula for my log normal distribution and I get the natural log of x minus theta over omega. So I plug 502 and the other two into that equation and I get 2. I then take that to my table and find the probability relative to a z-score of 2 and I get 0.97725. The next step would be to find a value for x such that x is less than x equals 0.9. So this type of problem is a little bit different than those we have done in the past. In general, we are looking for the probability here and we are given this value. This time we're going to work backwards. So we're going to go to my table and I'm going to find the value that most closely represents 0.9. And then I am going to calculate backwards to find this x value. So I went to the table and I found that z being equal to 1.285, so between 1.28 and 1.29, is approximately a 0.9 probability. I then would take this formula and I would want to plug that in for z to calculate x. I'm going to first rearrange the formula so I can do this easier without having to drag that 1.285 along through my calculations. First thing I'm going to do is rearrange a little bit. So I'm going to take this omega up and multiply it by the other side. Then I'm going to bring this theta over and add it to the other side. So then I get the natural log of x equals z times omega plus theta. So remember my goal is to get x alone. So in order to get x alone I'm going to, I'm going to take both sides as an exponent for e. So e to the natural log x equals e to the z omega plus theta. So simplifying that, I get x equals all of that. So now I'm going to fill in my values and I get x equals 96.5. So a way to look at it is 96.5 is x being less than that value equals 90% or there's a 90% probability that x will be less than or equal to 96.5. This concludes our lectures then for chapter 4. So with that in mind, here's a review of everything that we should have learned during this chapter. So you might want to take a second and just make sure you're familiar with all of these terms and calculations.